Hello there guys, and today I will be showing you how to use an Argus C3 35mm camera, how to load one, how to open one up and reassemble it, as well as providing you with sources on these cameras such as how to repair them, and when your particular Argus camera was made, and more. So now I'll get into the parts of the camera. Of course you have your lens, and on top of that lens you'll see that you have an aperture ring, you have f-stop 3.5 all the way up to 16. On the top right corner you'll have your shutter speed dial, it goes from 1 1 tenth of a second all the way up to 1 300th of a second, and you turn this about to change it. Here on the front of the camera you'll see on the left you have your rangefinder window, and on the right you have your composing window. This right here is your uh, idler cap gear, and underneath it is the idler gear that connects the rangefinder dial to the lens rangefinder dial, your sh uh, cocking shutter, and if I turn the camera up onto the top, this of course is your shutter. Right here you can see you have I which is just for the shutter dial, and then you have B which is bulb. Here you have your exposure counter, and this is your uh, release button so you can turn and wind the film. Right here is the winding dial. And on the side, on the side you'll have your inserts here for your flash gun, but some more modern Argus C3 cameras from the 50s have a flash uh, hot shoe insert on the top which would be located about here in this section. You can see that this late 1950s model Argus C3 has a hot shoe on the top of the camera. But since my camera is slightly older, it has the flash gun inserts here. I believe some Argus C3 cameras don't have any of these, but I wouldn't be surprised. Here's the latch to open the back cover of the Argus camera. Just push that down. Instead of the camera, you simply have your sprocket wheels, the cavity you put your film in, and on the left side you have the cavity and the spool to take up the film. And right there is the leaf shutter, as you can see right here. There's not much on the bottom, you simply have your winding knob here that which also pops up and then here you have your tripod insert and this little black piece here is just to support the camera I sometimes use this and untwist it so I can tilt the camera up when doing long exposure since sometimes I don't have my tripod nearby and those are all the parts of the camera if you're wondering what this is when you open this up you can you'll have two small screws and those two small screws will be to adjust your rangefinder, and it's very tricky to adjust the rangefinder, but maybe in another video I'll show you how to fix the rangefinder if you need to. Okay, so now I'll go over the operation of the this camera. Just imagine that there's film in here. I didn't put film in here because I don't want to waste any shots just to show you this. Okay, so imagining that there's film in here, the first step you want to do is, of course, if you have a light meter, uh, measure your s environment and set the aperture and the shutter speed. Now I told you that the aperture ring here on the front controls your aperture and by twisting and pulling on these little pegs sticking out here you can change the aperture. If you look closely here there'll be a little black line right here and you turn this and line this up with the aperture setting that you want and right now it's lined up with aperture 8 which means it is f-stop 8 right now and to set your shutter speed there's a little black arrow up here and you line up your shutter speed that you want to set so once you set the shutter speed and the aperture look through this right window and you should see that on the top there will be white screen and on the bottom there will be a yellow tinted screen now you're going to have to move the lens back and forth by moving this lens here or moving this dial here and if you do so then you'll see that the images will become start coming closer or farther away from one another and if they're going farther away then you're going to have to start twisting the lens the opposite direction and once your image your two halves of your image line up then that means the rage finder is in focus which means the lens is in focus since it's connected by this one gear let me show you how the how to use it you can see in this picture that the top half is clear and the bottom half is yellow or blue depending on the age of the camera. In this next picture you can see that this white pole is cut in half and crooked. By simply turning the rangefinder dial or lens to and fro, the two halves of the camera 
come together and make the image one whole. Now you can see that the pole is centered. This means that the range file dial is in focus, which means that the lens is in focus. After you focus the range finder and lens, look through the left window and compose your image. You can see that I am composing an ironing board here. So once you have your range finder and lens in focus, you can then take your photo. On the top right, you of course have your shutter, and your shutter has two settings, it has I and B. You'll have this white dot here pointing to uh, which letter setting you want to use. I means you're going to be using the shutter speed that you've selected on the camera previously, but B is bulb which means as long as you're holding the shutter down, the lens, the shutter will be open. I've removed the lens here, and you can see that when I cock the shutter and push the shutter, which is set on the letter I setting, that the shutter just goes off to the shutter speed it's been selected to, which is 1 300th of a second. But if I set this to bulb, and I cock the shutter, and then I close down on the shutter, you can see that as long as I'm holding down on the shutter, the shutter will remain open until, of course, I let go. If I set it back to I, it's set back to the regular speed. So now once you've selected your shutter option, here is the shutter cocking lever. You're going to depress this. And you'll see that it'll go down in the lock position. You'll hear a click. Then turn the camera over. And looking through the left window this time, compose your image, see what you want to get. And then depress the shutter. And you take your image. Now, when taking an image, you want to ensure that your finger isn't in the way. A lot of people have these problems that whenever they're taking an image, their middle finger, ring finger will be in the way. And you won't, don't want that to happen because you're going to have the shutter open a little longer than you want to. So on to the next part, and that is loading in the film. You see I have the camera turned on to its right side, and on the left side you'll see that there will be this silver latch here. You're going to want to take your thumb and depress on this bump right here. And at the same time, you're going to take your other hand and you're going to pull the cover to the left. So I'm going to depress and then pull the cover open. And then you'll see that I have the camera open now. So you can see I have the camera resting on its face now, and there are three main parts to the back here. You're going to have the cavity for the film, the sprocket wheels right here, and the take-up spool over here. So you're going to take your film, any 35mm film is good, then you're going to see right here this knob right here, the rewind knob. You're going to want to push that forward, so then you can have that clear out of the way. Then you're going to put your film in there, just like so, and then you're going to pop that back in, then you're going to bring your film over to the left side, and it's hard to see, but if you look closely in the left side, you'll see that the take-up spool has this thin cut in the center. You're going to take the lip of the film, and you're going to insert your film inside that lip. So then once you have your film secured here in the left side, and your film is snug in the sprockets and everything's flattened close the back and then once you have the back closed depress on the latch and at the same time close the back cover and then release the latch and it should be secured then get go to the exposure counter and then set it to one before zero which is the 36 exposure set it one before zero like so, and then you're going to, you're, you, you'll notice that the, this, the winding knob won't move until you move the left button, the, the button to the left, and then wind, and you'll see the exposure counter move, and then it'll lock into place, it wasn't fully calibrated, should be set to zero, so it's locked into place, and then you're gonna twist it one more time, I usually do two turns, but I don't know what you want to do with your film expertise. And then after two winds, it, sh the, it should move up two marks, and now it's at the first exposure. Now, these cameras, since they're 60, 70 plus years old, of course they're going to break down and there's going to be some mechanical issues. So, have, being able to repair one of your own Argus C3s is important when using one of these cameras. Especially when you buy one from a thrift store at, on eBay and they're broken. You'll notice that my Argus C3 is all shiny on the front and you'll look at other Argus C3s and you'll see this 
black um, design on it. Mine doesn't have that since mine was beyond repair when I received it. So I decided to tear it all off to make it look more cosmetically appealing. So to open up the front of the camera and remove the front to get into all the internals, they're first going to want to take the steps to take apart the front, the lens, and all these things up on the front. So the first thing you're going to do is set your lens to the three foot mark on the rangefinder. That's because the lens is extended to its furthest position and the cap can easily screw off. So then once you take the cap off, leave that aside, and then pull out the idler gear like so. Now it is important you do not start turning the rangefinder willy nilly, because if you go past the three foot mark to the left, or past the infinity mark to the right, you're going to go into this section which damages the rangefinder, and you don't want to do that, meaning you're going to have to take the camera and calibrate it, and it is not fun to calibrate an Argy C3, especially with the tools I have. So then you're going to take the lens, twist it counterclockwise, and just set the lens aside. Now do not touch the leaf shutter because then you're going to get oil all over that and that won't also won't work. Alright, so the next part is to take the shuttercock and just twist it clockwise. It's a reverse thread from regular screws. Then go to your shutter dial and you'll see there's, there's a screw there. Take a flathead screwdriver, I'm using a small one, so it'll be able to fit through these screws and unscrew the shutter and then once you do that set that aside make sure that screw doesn't fly away from you then once you have all the top part you can start unscrewing these six screws if you have the paper leatherette on there you're gonna want to lift up the corners of the flaps and if they do come off then just glue them back and they should be good try not to tear them because they're like I said old Alright, and then take out the last screw. Now before you lift up, I want to tell you that under, underneath um, this section of the plate here, what connects the mechanism to the, sh the shutter variation mechanism to the shutter dial up here is a small finger that holds onto the mechanism. So you want to be careful when you pull off the cover, you're going to see on the bottom right here that there's going to be a small piece, black piece right here. Just pull that out and set that aside. Don't want to lose that that's very important now onto the best part you see I have exposed all the internal mechanisms here and you'll notice that all of these things are laying across the entire face of the camera that's because all the mechanisms are just placed right here on the front end of the camera everything else is just cheap bake like plastic so I'll point out the main mechanisms here but, but before you do anything you'll see that this part of the shutter mechanism is like some sort of cam you won't just want to lift that up and put that away. That's also part of the shutter mechanism. If you can see the silver end attached to the spring, this spring is attached by this thin piece of metal plate, and that metal plate is connected to this cam right here. So as you turn that, this finger right here is connect, gets connected to the shutter. So we need to press the shutter, that releases the cam, which causes the spring to pull at the shutter, and the shutter opens and closes, and that varies with this mechanism down here. As I, if, if you remember just recently that we just pulled this piece out here from the back of the camera faceplate, as, this, as you turn the dial, the finger which is connected right here moves up and down and as it moves up and down you can see that it moves this yellow mechanism here. So as you're moving that up and down it varies the shutter speed that you want. So if you want one tenth of a second it's going to push down on this and then you'll see that this hook right here is going to move to the right. And if you want one three hundredth of a second, it's going to move all the way to the left. And you'll feel a lot of tension when moving to the one tenth of a second because it requires a lot of force to move this down. So I'm going to remove the shutter and show you this silver piece here and what's underneath the shutter. Now when removing the shutter, you're going to have three screws around the shutter right here. I'm missing the third one right here. So when you remove the shutter, you, you have nothing to worry about since the entire shutter is assembled in this one kit here. So when you remove this, you can set that aside and nothing's going to fall apart like other Argus cameras. <coughs> okay, so I removed the final screw and gently 
pull up the shutter with your fingers without touching the shutter blades themselves. So you notice here on the back that it's going to be pretty much the same from the front. It's just a pl two plates sandwiching the, the shutter leaves. But you'll notice here that there'll be the silver piece here. And when I push on that silver piece, it opens the shutter like so. So whenever you cock the shutter, this piece here moves to the left and it gets locked there. And if you can see this weird pivoting thing right here, whenever I cock the shutter, you'll see that'll move to the right. And that caught that flicking motion flicks open the shutter, pushing on that silver end right there. It flicks open the shutter and the shutter opens for how fast, however fast this moves. This moves from move from the left to the right in one three hundredth of a second. But of course, if you turn the shutter speed knob, this will move up and down and it'll take longer. So there are several things that can break down from wear and tear or for, from abuse with these cameras. For with my camera, I had two problems. This spring here was broken and I was able to find a replacement piece for that. And the connection between this metal bit here and the cam is this thin piece of metal right here and being under tension all the time or just from abuse that can snap like mine did so i had a friend on the acg the argus collectors group he sent me a piece right here which connected the spring this bit here this metal bit and the cam and he gave it to me also the other parts that can break here is the rangefinder uh they wouldn't as so much break but rather get out of focus uh let me tell you how that happens. Like I said earlier, you don't want to twist the rangefinder and end up damaging it. That's because doing that will cause this to move in and out so frequently and violently that it just causes it get to get out of focus. So if I zoom in here and unscrew this, you'll see right here that there's two screws and you're going to need a very fine screw to adjust these and I'll go over that later. So once you get all three shutter screws installed, or in this case two, you're going to want to reassemble the shutter mechanism and then put the cover back on. So then you're going to want to gather the, the face plate, the finger hook, the washer, the dial, the screw, and the cam. So you're going to take the washer and drop it back down here, like so. And then you're going to set the cam on top of that, like that. The cam has to be pointing down, down like this, like so. And once it's, that's pointing down, that means it's set to one tenth of a second. Then once you have it set like that, take the dial and point it towards the arrow, which says one tenth. And if you flip it over, that this should be sticking out like a fin on the bottom and this should be pointing at one tenth of a second so then after that you're gonna put the screw back on and then screw it tightly into place so then once you have this screwed in this should be pointing at one tenth of a second and on the back this fin should be pointing down like that take the camera body again take this finger hook here and slide it up here back into position under this bracket right here and once you slid that up there turn it over and gently put it down so you'll notice here that I have a hole where the paper leatherette ought to be and if you see right there you can see the finger right there and if you wiggle it around it should fall into place on top of this metal piece underneath here pull that out you'll see right here that this piece this triangle-like piece has a hole there. The hook should go inside that hole. So ensure that when you do have the paper leatherette on, like most people do, that wiggle it in, and once it feels snug and tight by turning the dial, then you know that you put it in. So I can see mine nice and snug, and as I turn this, it feels nice. And then after that, you're going to want to put the screws back on. Then after that, you can go ahead and screw the shuttercock back on. In order to correctly put the lens back in sync with the rangefinder dial, I'm going to be reading from the original Argus C3 manual on replacing the lens. And it says here, step one, screw centaur lens into camera, turning to right past resistance point until seated firmly. So you're gonna screw this in, 
and then tighten that so it's nice and screwed on there. Then it says step two, turn the lens back to left until a wide range of gear teeth are opposite to idler gear shaft. This is the idler gear shaft and you can see the wide range of teeth here so you're going to turn until you see a bunch in front of the shaft. Then you're going to drop the idler gear inside here and make sure before you do that that this is at the three foot mark. Then step three, turn lens to right as far as it will go. This will position lens exactly in infinity position. Lift out idler gear again, being careful not to disturb lens position. Set the rangefinder dial exactly on infinity by turning it like so. And then replace the idler gear, being careful not to disturb positions of lens or rangefinder dial. Then it says here, set to the three foot mark because that means now the lens is extended to its furthest position so you can screw the cap back on and then screw the cap back on. Camera is now ready for picture taking. Over the 25 plus years that Argus C3s were made, they had many major and minor changes to the body and to the parts of it. And you can see here side by side that the only thing that these two lenses have in similarity with the f-stop is that this is 3.5 and 3.5 and everything else is different. The 1947 lens has 3.5, 4.5, 6.3, 9, 12.7, and 18, and the 1950s Argus E3 lens has 3.5, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, and 16. Another minor change that the Argus E3 had over time was it changed the numbering here and it added between 50 feet and infinity feet, 100, but versus that of the 1950s Argus, they took that out, and they also included these two arrows here. I'm not really sure what that's meant for, but I believe that's general uh, focusing if you're too lazy to focus, and this one doesn't have anything on it. The difference between the older and newer Argus C3 is that this one has 10 screws on the right side, and this one has 8 screws on the right side. There's nothing different on the left side other than the fact that the flash gun insert here is silver and the flash gun insert here is gold. But the most major change between both of these cameras is that the 1947 Argus C3 has this ASA Weston dial on the back while the 1950s Argus C3 doesn't have anything on the back. The dial served as a reminder to tell you what kind of film you had, and you can see here that this runs from ISO 8 all the way up to ISO 160. But they removed this in the 1950s Argus camera, as you can see there's nothing here, which is meant to cut cost since it also requires you need to put the dial and you need two paper leatherettes here versus the removal of the dial and only having to put one strip. I also s remember seeing an Argus C3 late in the late in the 1950s that it completely removed these silver bars here for it just to have one whole paper leatherette. And the final difference that I want to explain to you guys is the color of the rangefinder window. The 1950s Argus is yellow while the 1947 Argus is blue. I'm not sure if this is true but I believe that some early Arguses have just two clear windows. However, all the differences that I just explained are not all of them out there. There are so many changes that I can't even list them. However, the Argus Collectors Group could help you with that. The ACG is a website that has several reference manuals to help repair countless Argus cameras, as well as having descriptions of when your Argus camera was made, reference photographs, dates of certain variants, etc. They even have Argus camera contests, such as Argus Day, which takes place in Argus, and Christmas photography contests. Best of all, you, you can you, if you email the head of the ACG, you can... He can add you to the Yahoo group, and you can chat with over 1,000 Argus members. I emailed for help on how to fix the 1947 C3 of having shutter light leaks, and instead of getting info, a member was so generous that he sent me two operational shutters for my use. And that was my video on the Argus C3. I hope you enjoyed, and if anyone cares enough, I'll show you later in another video how to calibrate the rangefinder. Until then, see you later.